how did the specialty pharmacies prepare to manage treatments for AD? And how would you approach things like understanding these new options and, and making him happy? After all, don't we all want to make him happy? <laughs> we all do. And, 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 and we we're done do. here today. There we go. And yeah. we're done here today. Well, but, as, as we talk about collaboration of stakeholders, um, it's, it's specialty pharmacies working together with payers, working with prescribers really to um, make sure that we're taking care of these patients. Some of these drugs in the atopic dermatitis pipeline may or may not come through uh, specialty pharmacy as a you know mainstay. Maybe specialty pharmacy is really that backstop, meaning maybe they're not limited in their distribution to specialty. Maybe they are um, out, out in the open distribution. Probably a topical, um, you know, I'm not so sure. Um, injectables. That can be tricky, particularly in this patient population where they've not been on an injection prior. Uh, Topilumab will have a loading dose, so presumably, presumably that will be done in the doctor's office. So there's some training on that. But uh, you know, then we need uh, reinforcement of injection site training. That's a lot of what uh, specialty pharmacy does, right? We educate on the disease state. We educate uh, patients on what they can do just in general to take care of themselves. So there, there are a lot of things that, that we are preparing ourselves for in this um, atopic dermatitis space because historically, we've not been there, right? We don't, we don't have that segment cut out. And Cheryl, uh, one of the things that I think is perhaps not completely unique here, but really important um, is that uh, the patients are going to need to continue these other therapies. Mm -hmm. So right now, a lot of the therapies that go through, especially pharmacy, that's the entire therapy. Right. You know, they have, you know, perhaps, you know, one injection for MS, and maybe they're taking Empira orally, but you really don't have to worry about that too much. If they're benefiting from it, they take it. We know this. Uh, but in this case, um, these patients may be on rather complex topical regimens. They may also need, for at least some period of time, to be taking an oral medication, antihistamine or something, to take the edge off the pruritus. And so, you know, can especially pharmacy help the patient in adherence with those things when they're not actually the things that you provide? So you don't really have any data on it, but you're going to be talking to the patient. That's an interesting concept because, um, you know, here at Diplomat, uh, we do a great deal of work in the oncology space. Mm -hmm. And some patients, even though we may only have a limited distribution on one of their drugs, uh, we offer to fill all of their drugs if that's what the patient would like us to do. Uh, Revlimid, for instance, dexamethasone pulse therapy there, uh, we offer to fill all of those. Um, in the cystic fibrosis space, we may take that entire patient and fill all of those drugs, digestive enzymes, and we may even throw in there hand sanitizer and tissues. Right? Again, it's that concept of 360 taking care of that patient. Um, most of the specialty pharmacies that you'll deal with are also um, have some type of national accreditation, URAC accreditation or uh, equivalent. And one of those uh, parameters of getting that accreditation is that on an intake, you're looking at all of those prescriptions that the patient, prescription and non-prescription drugs that the patient is on, so that when we do our counseling with the patients, we understand, again, going back to that 360 view of the patient, so we know not only that specialty drug that we're filling, we also know the um, non-specialty drugs that we may or may not be filling, even over-the-counter drugs. And what about working with physicians groups? Yes, <laughs> right, so we have to be um, a resource group to the physicians, right? Um, especially pharmacy is um, a resource to send out uh, fax notifications on uh, drugs that will be coming available. Uh, so we are the, the peer resource for that, for these folks, if they're willing to talk to us <laughs> about that. I hate um, to point out that faxes are going away. Oh. <laughs> Interesting that you say that. In 1990, the mode of transportation or the mode of uh, transmission for prescriptions into specialty pharmacy was fax. Today, same thing. Is that and right? really, it's because uh, from the payer perspective, there's a lot of clinical information that's needed to go along with the justification for appropriate utilization. We talked about a lot of that today. So, can you imagine writing out the prescription, trying to hit e submit? Yeah. <laughs> but then you need that easy score. 
and you need the score rad, and then you need concomitant therapy. So there's a lot of information. So many times the prescribing community is sending in those fax forms. Okay, they're not, they're, not, uh, they're not doing e-prescriptions for this kind of stuff. That's surprising to me. Not on new prescriptions. Some of the uh, refill prescriptions oh, okay. will, will come in on e-prescribe. So